Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. I think this is actually the first time since March that I've worn a full face of makeup, but I thought it was fitting and wanted to do a little purple look because I'm gonna be talking about Fenty Skin, as you guys can tell from the title. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Fenty Skin. I've been teasing it on my Instagram um, because I've been trying it out for two weeks now. I did purchase these products with my own money, and as always, my reviews are gonna be very honest. As always, to disclose, I am not a licensed dermatologist or a cosmetic formulator. I'm just a little brown skin girl who loves skincare, spends way too much of my time reading about skincare, but it's supposed to be a jumping off point for you to do your own research as well. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha and I am a skincare enthusiast. I post a lot of videos on skincare and makeup, hair, lifestyle. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. As always, we want to talk about the brand a little bit. So I'm sure everybody knows, but in case you don't, this is Fenty Skin created by Rihanna. And she has a team of people behind her who've created these products for her as well. From everything that I've read about Fenty Skin and everything that I've seen Rihanna talk about, she has been very involved in the process and really wanted to curate a skincare line that was simple, that was accessible, that is, you know, just for everybody. It's unisex. It's supposed to be for everyone, for all skin types. And looking over the brand, the packaging, the ingredients, and just everything about the way that they were formulated, you can really tell that there was a lot of passion behind these products. And I am super excited for Rihanna. This is an amazing moment for her, especially as an island girl. I'm an island girl myself, and seeing somebody who came from the Caribbean and is doing big things in the world is so heartwarming. It shows me and other girls like me, I'm sure, that you can do anything you put your mind to. Girls, guys, whoever the case may be, you can do anything. This is a girl who came up from the islands, who, you know, made her mark in music, became a fashion icon, raised the bar when it comes to makeup, and is now releasing her own skincare lines. I'm very excited for Rihanna, and congratulations. I'm pretty sure you've, you probably won't watch this video, but if you do, congratulations on this launch as well. Reading into the products packaging themselves, they are made from plastic. They're not glass. However, they're made from PCA plastic, which means that the actual plastic used to contain the products are made from recycled plastic. With that being said when we're talking about the hydrovisor itself it comes in a refillable packaging which I think is beautiful and I think a lot of other companies should do this as well we use sunscreen we have to use sunscreen so it's really interesting that they have a refillable packaging with it but with that being said so this one would be made from the PSA plastic the box is recyclable this is the only box in the line everything else just comes as is also because they're not glass when you actually get the shipment box I showed that on my Instagram I'll put it up on the screen you'll see that there isn't a lot of paper there isn't a lot of packaging and they can do that because these are plastic they're not going to break if they get shook, shaken shake sh shaken around <laughs> I can't talk so while that is all good and dandy, the actual res refillable packaging is not recyclable. So that's the only thing. If they can find a way to make this recyclable as well, that would be beautiful. But as of right now, it's not. So let's get into the products themselves. The first one being the Total Cleanser. I'm on their website right now. This is supposed to be a remove it all cleanser. It's supposed to cleanse your skin and remove makeup and sunscreen. The texture of this is absolutely beautiful. I think it is such a hydrating cleanser. If I didn't mention before, I do have combination oily skin, which is sometimes sensitive, and recently it's been more on the dry combination side. I like a lot of products that are very moisturizing. And the fact that this is such a hydrating, creamy cleanser, it doesn't strip your skin, you don't feel dry, you feel, it's just luxurious. I love the feeling. It almost feels like I'm putting mousse on my face or something. It's melting through my makeup really easily. I'm actually kind of shocked at how well that broke down my foundation. My skin still feels nice and smooth. And of course, the reason being is because it does have some gentle surfactants. Amphal acetate and the other cocoa. Listen, there are three types of cocoa cleansers in here. And these are basically derived from coconut oil. Now, going through not only this product, but also the other products that she has, it's very focus on brightening everything that's going to just give you beautiful brightened skin especially with the Bayesian cherry that's in there which is a very very potent vitamin c so you can tell like it's it's supposed to brighten and hydrate your skin 
So there's a lot of star ingredients in here, a lot of things that you don't regularly see in cosmetics, but it is beautiful to see that these products are sourced from quality ingredients from all around the world, from China, from Barbados, from other places as well. So I love that. It's just that innovation as well, things that we don't usually see in, in skincare. Now, to be honest, I was a little like, meh, when I first heard of the cleanser, I was like, you know, I have a cleanser, I have a moisturizing cleanser, I'm a big fan of double cleanse and that's never gonna go away. But I was really shocked by this product. I did not expect it to remove my makeup as well as it did. It removed everything. You guys saw the cotton ball. Even when I ran around the hairline, there was barely anything on my skin. Now, I still would recommend double cleansing with this product. One, to remove the makeup, and then second, cleanse to actually cleanse your skin and have all the actual good hydrating ingredients really penetrate and touch your skin. So those are all the good things that I love about this product. And as always, we're going to talk about the few things that I don't really like about this product. So when you go down the list, you see that they have parfum, fragrance. So fragrance is one of those ingredients that actually really don't do anything for the skin, okay? If you don't have fragrance in your skincare, it's not like you're gonna be missing anything from your skincare. The only reason why it's there is to make the product smell good and sometimes to mask the scent of some of the other ingredients that are in your products that don't really smell that good. But does it need to be in there? No. When you are somebody with reactive skin or uh, sensitive skin or any type of damage or compromised skin barrier acne prone skin problematic skin you want to run from those types of ingredients now I am happy to say that I didn't get any irritation from these products but once again my skin is mildly sensitive for somebody with more sensitive skin than myself this may be a little bit irritating a lot of people will say like I don't have any sensitivities to fragrance so I'm fine with using fragrance and that's good and dandy but the thing about fragrance is that even if you don't have a sensitivity to it today, with prolonged use, maybe 10 years down the line, you may develop sensitivities that you just never had before, all of a sudden. Where the colorants are concerned, I get it, it's for the whole experience of it. Colors don't need to be in the product either, but I get where she, where she was going. She wanted to look light and fluffy, and that's fine. Like I said, good and dandy. However, if you are somebody with reactive skin or highly sensitized skin right now, you're actually suffering from breakouts right now, this may not be the cleanser for you. So the next product that I'm gonna be talking about is the one that I was actually most excited to try from this line, just from seeing all of the texture videos and, and everything that was going on. It is actually the fat water. This is a beautiful toner serum hybrid and it has some really beautiful ingredients to brighten your skin and of course it has my favorite ingredient which is niacinamide and that's really what drew me to this in the first place. The packaging as well, this has another twist lock which is beautiful and I love that her products have that twist lock. I think it's so, it's interesting, you don't see that a lot. Um, you'll see a lot of videos of people using it like this and squeezing it out I don't really think it's that squeezy of a plastic, like it's not here. The squeezy bit is here by the bottom. You can see I can squeeze it, but here there's no squeeze action at all. And it really does feel like a serum. It feels beautiful on your skin. It's lightweight. It soaks in really quickly. It's not sticky, which I love. And it's, you can barely even smell anything on this, like barely. Actually, it feels really, really good. The texture, like a thicker version of the Ordinary's um, niacinamide, because it still has a little bit of that frost to it, that froth, froth, whatever the word is, that frothiness to it, but it's thicker. It feels like a serum, so which makes sense because it's supposed to be like a serum toner all in once, and I think it's beautiful. Ooh, okay. I can see the witch hazel though. So by all accounts, this is such a good product. It has some amazing hydrating in ingredients, porifying ingredients, things that are going to help soothe your skin, brighten your skin, and just help you control the oil. The only issue I have, well, two issues I have with this product is number one, the witch hazel. Witch hazel for a lot of people is a holy grail in their routines and it really was for me as well. I used to love the fires witch hazel until I really 
learned more about it, did a little bit more research, and used it for a really long period of time. For people with oily skin, you are going to love witch hazel. And the reason why is because it's an astringent. And it's going to help really just get rid of a lot of the oil on your skin, which is great in theory, but when you're using it over a long period of time, it can actually dry out your skin instead of moisturizing it. And I do see that there's a lot of hydrating ingredients to try to compensate for that, but even in the video that I'm showing you guys when I'm using it on my skin, you can see how it literally just mattifies my face. This is what I was kind of afraid of, when why witch hazel is not my best friend. And although it has very moisturizing and hydrating ingredients, you can see that my skin has no shine to it. It doesn't, I love my skin to look dewy and to look like that, but you don't get that dewiness. So this is my skin with just the fat water. I'm actually gonna apply a layer of this uh, R&W Hyal Treatment Toner to show you the difference because I think me just saying it is not really gonna demonstrate what I'm trying to say. But let's go ahead and add this little essence toner. And I'll show you guys what I mean. Do you see how my skin just looks shiny and healthy and glowy and it doesn't dry down to like a mattifying finish? I've been an avid mattifier for a very long time. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but mattifying your skin is not actually fixing the problem. Witch hazel is not alcohol. However, it is distilled in alcohol something that I don't really feel belongs in your products unless it's in a very small quantity and it's used as a preservative. But as you can see, this is the second ingredient in here. The thing about this is it's going to work. It's gonna work and it's gonna look amazing. It's gonna look bomb, especially if you have really oily skin. It's going to do amazing things. But over the long period of time, you're gonna see that your skin is just gonna be dry for reasons that you won't understand. When your skin is dry and lacking that oil, it's gonna overcompensate by producing more oil. But now, oil is not a hydrator, oil is a, um, an occlusive agent, it's a emollient. So you're not actually giving water to your skin, you're just putting a layer of oil, your skin is producing sebum to put a layer of oil on your skin to compensate for how dry your skin is. But there's no actual moisture down here, so you're just gonna be producing oil and oil and oil to compensate for the lack of hydration. And this is exactly how you get dehydrated skin. If you have really soft and supple skin on the top, but in the inside, because there's no hydration there, you'll move your face and you'll just feel tight. And it just doesn't make any sense because your skin is so moisturized. That is something that you're gonna eventually experience when you're using something like this. So the first thing I would change about this product is I would just take the witch hazel out, or if it really needs to be in there for texturizing purposes, I'm not a cosmetic formulator, maybe it needs to be in there for the texture, I would say move it down, okay? And instead bring up the aloe vera and bring up the green tea. Just move those around and make it a base of aloe vera instead and it will be such an amazing product. Reason being, green tea, is a natural astringent. So if you're looking for oil control, if you're looking for anything that is going to de-stress your skin, give yourself antioxidants, which fight against free radical damage, which is basically the thing, the little particles that actually break down your skin. If you have a lot of green tea, high quality green tea in there, it's going to do the exact same thing that you want witch hazel to do without the side effects. Put the aloe up there as well and you'll get that soothing quality. So while you're getting that super amazing high quality vitamin C and the niacin you're also going to get some of those soothing and antioxidant ingredients in there as well. So just move around the ingredients and this will be beautiful. The other thing that I would move around is of course the fragrance once again. There's fragrance in every single one of these products and I do understand that Rihanna and a lot of other people love fragrant products. This is the least fragrant product of all of the products that are there. This one is quite intoxicating, not a bad intoxicating. It smells like a, a sweet tropical citrus fragrance and they pretty much all have a very similar scent, which I love. I love the scent of this. If this were to be a body lotion, that would be super amazing. But anyways, the point being is that this one is really intoxicating. This one I think is a little bit more muted which is nice because it's a leave-on product. I don't think I would recommend this if you have acne-prone skin. If you have oily skin and no other issues, this would be fine, but I believe 
there should be some tweaks to it before you would want to you know go ahead and 100% spend your money on it. last but not least we have the Hydra visor now this is the product that I was like I can't wait to try this. As a brown skin girl, it is so important to be able to find an SPF that actually wears good on your skin. This Hydrovisor does just that. On their website, this is the Hydrovisor Invisible Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen. It retails for $35 with the whole package, and then you can get the refillable insert for $30, okay? On their website, they do say that this product is oil-free. It is formulated to be non-comedogenic, aka doesn't clog your pores. It is supposed to be for all skin types. It's also clean, vegan, and gluten-free. So this is an organic sunscreen, meaning a chemical sunscreen. So it's formulated with avobenzone 3%. Homosalate 9% and octisalate 4.5%. And these are great for both UVA and UVB, A for the aging, B for the burning of your skin. It is broad spectrum, so you're gonna get that good coverage. Besides that, it is also coral reef safe, which means that it's created without oxybenzone and octinoxate, which we know those damage the actual coral reef. So when you're washing it off your face down the drain, you are just fine. Um, it's supposed to be like if you're swimming and stuff like that, it's also going to be safe for the reefs. We'll get into that a little bit later. So some of the ingredients that are going to help with how it feels on your skin is, of course, the glycerin. It's a great humectant to add that hydration. It also has safflower, which is the emollient. It's going to give you that really good, luxurious texture on your skin. It has a couple of glycols, including butylene glycol, a great hydrator for your skin. It has niacinamide. We all know that. A couple of other great extracts and antioxidants in here, the aloe vera that we talked about. So overall, pretty, pretty good in terms of a formulation. It also does have cornstarch in here, which is important to point out because these products are supposed to be for all skin types, right? So when you have a lot of those really um, emollient textures like the safflower and so many hydrating ingredients, you need something to balance out the shine and to make sure that it's not like oily on the surface of the skin. And it actually does finish quite beautifully on the skin. It almost looks like a primer. And it really makes me understand how her Fenty Beauty and Fenty Skin work together because it literally feels like a primer. It applies so nicely under foundation. It is beyond me at how well it applies on your skin. It feels lightweight. It's a beautiful moisturizer. And from the videos that I've seen from some of the male skincare enthusiasts that I follow, it doesn't get stuck in your beard as far as I can see. And which is amazing because I can only empathize with the struggle of having your beard be looking white basically. As a brown skin girl, I know what it looks like to have your skin look white and it's beautiful that that doesn't happen with this. It's a very light moisturizer. I do like that. Sorry, some of it dropped out so I put it on my face already. But yeah. Oh, it has a has a very citrusy scent. Like a very light citrus scent. And it feels, ooh, that feels really, really nice on the skin. This feels absolutely amazing on your skin. Okay, so I just finished reapplying the SPF and it went on so smooth. No pilling, no weird texture or anything between like the dry skin and the moisturizer on top, nothing at all. Um, my skin feels good. It doesn't feel like there's like a really thick layer of something on my face. It just absorbs really nicely and it dries down to quite a nice uh, skin-like matte. It almost reminds me of like the Pro Filter primer that they have. It's it's not matte, it's not dewy, but it's just somewhere in the middle. So those are all the great things. Let's talk about some of the things that I don't quite like about this product. The first being, let's just get it out of the way, the fragrance once again. This product is supposed to be used as a protectant from the sun. Fragrance and specifically some of the fragrance that are in here are photosensitive. They're not stable in sunlight. So when you're going outside with this on your face, the sun is going to heat the skin and it's going to convert that into heat rather than into UV rays and disperses it across your face. The reason why this is a big issue is because it's gonna create a lot of irritation, essentially, because the, the, the ingredients are not stable in the sunlight. It's once again, if you have acne prone skin, this is going to be counterproductive because it is going to heat up your skin and we all know that your 
when when your skin is heated it creates inflammation and you're going to create more problems for yourself if you're using this outside so definitely not a sunscreen to wear if you're going to the beach i think this is fine if you're going to brunch if you're going to the office you're staying somewhat indoors maybe running out for a couple of minutes or something like that i think that's fine but if you're actually going to be spending your time outside this is not the sunscreen to wear go ahead and get a beach sunscreen something with zinc in it titanium dioxide if you're going to be at the beach this is just for aesthetic purposes the other thing I want to bring up is still on this same train of the fragrance. When it comes to sunscreen, you want to apply this everywhere. This means on your ears, on your neck, on your decolletage, and also on your eyelids. You want to make sure that your eyelids are covered from and protected from the sun. But with the amount of fragrance in here, this is honestly the most fragrant product out of all of them that I've tried so far, your eyes will feel like they're stinging. It's the end of the day, and I look super crazy and dramatic right now. It's not because I've been crying. It's because I've been putting eye drops in my eyes for the past, like, couple of, for the past hour, okay? Eye drops. Because I almost forgot that I was wearing this on my face, and I decided to rub my eyes. And ever since then, sorry, it's a fly. Ever since then, the fragrance has just been bothering my eyes, like, nobody's business and so it would subside and I'd be fine then I would laugh and when I laugh I tend to cry and so then when my eyes water because the product is around my eyes it gets in my eyes again and I'm putting eye drops in my eyes so for the past hour I've been doing that um so if I can give you one piece of advice, do not put this around your eyes. I've noticed that the fragrance kind of lingers so I did put it on twice today now I can't touch my eyes. Um, I put it on twice today and I've washed my hands, I've cooked, I've done everything, you know, uh, with my hands and I can still smell the fragrance on my hands. Like it is, it's not strong when you actually use it, but it lingers, it doesn't go away. If you were to smell my face right now, it smells like the product. I like fragrance that kind of goes away a little bit. This one is, is a, it, it's pretty strong. So that's really unfortunate because you want to be able to apply your sunscreen around your eyes. I would not recommend putting that there. So what I did instead while I was testing out this product is I actually used the CeraVe's um, sunscreen. This is their ultralight moisturizing lotion with 30 SPF as well for normal to oily skin. And I use this as an eye cream sunscreen. This is the only case when I would say you would want to get an eye cream sunscreen and put that around your eyes. So I, 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 I love this, but I just can't recommend it. I was super excited for this product because knowing Rihanna and seeing everything that came from her Fenty Beauty line, I was expecting this to just knock everything out of the park. And don't get me wrong, in terms of celebrity releases of skincare, this is by far the most amazing line I've seen. Right off the bat, you're coming out with an SPF. That is almost unheard of. SPF is really hard to formulate. It takes two years to formulate your sunscreen and to make sure that it's FDA approved and has all of those labelings and, and criterias that is hard to do it's hard to make a sunscreen so hats off to that number one but I was expecting a little bit more from Fenty I kind of hold it to a higher standard when it comes to skincare in general I don't believe that this line is like a treatment line but I do think it is a serious skincare line which is refreshing to see but the part that I'm disappointed in with this sunscreen specifically besides the fragrance beside all of that is the fact that there's only 50 milliliters of product. I don't know where in the skincare world people got this impression or brands got this impression that you only need 50 milliliters of a sunscreen. This will only last you about three weeks to a month. And for something that costs $30, like that is expensive. Now mind you, all sunscreens are like this. This is not exclusive to, to Fenty. All sunscreens are like this. This one as well. It is 50 milliliters and it cost, if I remember, maybe about $13, $14. Don't quote me on that. I'll put it down below. But only 50 milliliters. The amount of sunscreen that you actually need to be applying on your skin is a lot. Like you need a shot glass worth of sunscreen to actually get 30 SPF. So it boggles my mind why these sunscreens are so small. Like... What am I supposed to do with this? This is so tiny. This is so tiny. I've been using this for two weeks 
and the product you guys can see it in the light it's like right down here for two weeks the reason being is because you need a lot of this you need a good seven to eight pumps of this product to get the actual recommended amount of sunscreen. Sunscreen, in my opinion, needs to have a whole revolution because people for some reason still don't understand it. Sunscreen should be the size of this box. This packaging that the sunscreen actually came in, it should be the standard size of sunscreen because of the amount that you need to use. I was expecting a little bit more, especially from Rihanna who has broken so many barriers with the makeup world. But skin is different, and I understand that skin is different. But hopefully seeing these reviews from dermatologists as well as skin uh, enthusiasts like myself, this will get brands to wake up. And I honestly love this line. I think it is a fantastic line. I love everything that it stands for, the ingredients, the quality of ingredients that are in here, the formulations, the textures, so many things I love about this. I just feel like it, it needs a few tweaks in there. The last thing to note about the sunscreen is I really don't want people to get confused. When you're wearing a moisturizer, you literally just need one pump and you're good to go. What I'm scared of is that people are gonna confuse that with this as well and apply that same mentality to applying this sunscreen because it's a moisturizer and a sunscreen. My biggest fear is that people are going to use one pump of this and think they're good to go. This is the same bone that I have to pick with foundation and makeup that is also sunscreen because you're never going to wear enough of that to actually be effective. But honestly, if you are going to use it, then use it. The best sunscreen that you can use on your skin is one that you're actually going to wear. When I saw the moisturizer had SPF, I immediately thought that there was going to be a night cream coming out. To my surprise, seeing Rihanna's video where she's demoing these products in a night routine and she's using this as a night cream. Once again, I don't want people to be under this impression that this is what you're supposed to be using at night. Sunscreen is honestly as the name suggests. It's supposed to block your skin from the sun, aka sunblock. At nighttime, there is no sun. You don't need to protect your skin from sunscreen at night. We are not creating moon screen, okay? We have sunscreen. So I was expecting a night cream to be in the next launch perhaps, but it seems as though from you know the impression that I'm getting, it may take a while for a night cream to come out. She has all the great ingredients to do a night cream. If it wasn't already on the agenda, I believe it will be on the agenda. We will see a night cream. But yeah, those are my thoughts on these products. I really wanted to go in and give you guys the most honest opinion I can as somebody with problematic skin. I know that you guys watching me probably have problematic skin as well. And it's one thing to see a review from somebody with like really clear skin who's never had to deal with any issues great power to you but as somebody with problematic skin I create these videos because I never saw them when I was growing up and hopefully you guys enjoy this enjoyed what I had to say leave a comment down below and let me know have you tried Fenty skin will you be trying Fenty skin what are your thoughts and opinions I would love to know um, as always click over here to see some of my previous videos and stay gorgeous stay fabulous I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video bye Thank <laughs> you.